Small cap valuations have gotten a lot more interesting. Around middle of last year, it was tough for us to find new ideas, um, but you know, it depends on where you're looking, but being growth focused investors, a lot of growth names have just been pummeled. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, that, that's a positive and that's giving us a chance to put more cash to work. Um, and we typically run with a decent cash balance, enough that I can sleep at night and we can be proactive, not so much that I feel like it defines our returns because I want it to be the businesses we own doing that. Um, but yeah, we've been opportunistic in buying and you know, I think the timing is nice with reporting season about to kick in and companies about to show us what they got and get out and talk to us. So, I mean, we're, we're always excited for reporting season, but I think this one in particular is going to be a lot more interesting. Why is that? Well, so many companies have just been thrown to the curb. I think a lot of managers are also uh, nursing wounds as well. You know, last quarter was really difficult. And I think a lot of managers who are very short-term focused um, are probably going to be a little, they're probably a little gun shy right now. Um, I like that as someone who, you know, operates with a multi-year time horizon and, and that's how we invest. So, I mean, the, the truth is, right, you get in meetings where, you know, you sit around a room with a bunch of other fund managers and you've got a CEO. I would say 75% of questions from the managers in the room are about, well, what's going to happen in the next half, basically. Um, most of them are not there. They don't ask questions about, well, what's the competitive outlook? How are your competitors reacting? How do you think about pricing power? What are you doing to improve your go-to-market strategy? Any of these things that the CEO actually cares about. <sighs> That's where we live, and I look forward to getting in some of those conversations and trying to avoid some of the, the other questions. Well, I think a lot of it is just temperament at the portfolio manager level. I mean, people are different, but I'm just wired to to invest that way personally. Like I have lost zero sleep about volatility in the past few months. I'm just, that's how I'm wired. Um, but in terms of what we own, you know, I think it's really critical that you have a very a good definition of that and that what you're owning is aligned with that time horizon. For us, you know, that's why we're heavily focused on quality growth companies. So we're looking for really attractive returns on incremental investment. Um, you know, that, that's, that's jargony, but a better way to put it is you know, when a company goes out and spends money to acquire a customer through advertising, through their sales force, how much are they spending to get that customer? How long is that customer going to spend, stay with them? And how much money do you think they're going to get off that? And if they can get, you know, four, five, six times that value that they're going to spend, then that's probably going to work out really nicely for the business. And so we love situations like that, especially if it's a big market, it's a global market. Um, you know, that's more kind of like the enterprise SaaS side. Um, you move more towards networks, um, something like an afterpay, where you're looking for a business that has, you know, a two-sided network, or it could be a single side, but say a two-sided network. You've got merchants who love the product. Um, they're making more money. They're getting higher conversions. you got customers who clearly love the product because they're flocking to it. And that just feeds in a virtuous circle. And then you start to see higher engagement per user. Flywheel starts going, and... And you get a lot of optionality in situations like that. And that's part of the reason I'm so big on businesses with network effects is you can just have just a, a total snowball and a value happen so quickly and you'll get something like Afterpay Touch. I think it's part of the reason that it snuck up on so many fund managers um, and it just blew past a lot of them. It's, it's a young business, but the network dynamics um, make it very different from traditional companies that you'll look at on ASX.